Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can make your own character generator. So here I have a bundle. This is from the Humble Bundle Pack. And right now they are doing a charity bundle where you can buy 18 different items for just $30. In some countries, it's going to be $25. And out of that pack, I have these three items selected. They are from the RPG Maker Character Generator where you can generate different expressions. And it tells us here that you will be getting 23 characters and uh, each character will have seven different expressions. Now, if you were to buy these individual items, it's going to cost you 30 US dollars. But in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can get similar result inside of Comfy UI. And if you're running this locally, it's completely free. This is an example of what you will be able to do with this method that I'm about to show you. So as you can see, I have one character and I have that same character in eight different expression. For today's video, you will need to have Comfy UI installed. You can have it locally or on the cloud. I have a video on the channel and I will have the link in the description below. Next, you will need to have the LTX video. This one, all you need to do is to have Comfy UI up to date. If you want to know how LTX video works, I have this video on the channel. I released it yesterday. Again, I will have the link in the description below. Once you have these two, we can get started. Okay, so once you have Comfy UI installed up to date and um, Hopefully you've watched that LTX video so you know a little bit about LTX video. When you start Comfy UI, you will see an interface like this. This is the default workflow. We are going to use the Flux workflow. So go to the top here where it says Workflow. Click on Browse Templates. And then in here, select Flux. And then we are going to use this workflow here that says Flux Dev. You can click on it and it should load the workflow. Now, some of you may get a pop-up saying that you are missing some checkpoints. In that case, just click on the download button next to it and it will automatically download and install those checkpoints for you. We are going to use this workflow to generate our character template that we will use in order to generate different expressions later on. So to work with this, just make sure that you have your Flux Dev at the 8 version here. In this green section, you will need to add a prompt the prompt describe what you want to see in the final image. So I've already written a prompt here, this one. At the top, I have an illustration and I want a woman. I'm describing the eyes, hair, have confident expression here, but we will be able to change this later on. If you want your character to have any accessories, let's say you're doing some kind of RPG character, then you can have like crown or maybe armor in there. I'm also describing the lighting of the image as well as the color scheme so if you want to have consistency you want to use this method finally i'm also describing the background i want to have the background as minimalistic as possible in case i want to remove that background it's going to be easier so i'm going to have this prompt in the description below or maybe in the post you can go into the post copy the prompt and you can give it to chat gpt and just tell it to uh, change the prompt to whatever you want. Let's say you want a man or maybe you want a hero character, then you can just ask ChatGPT to change the prompt for that character. Now, once you've added your prompt, all you have to do is to click on this Q button. For some of you, the Q button can be at the bottom. This can be dragged to the top and I'm going to do four characters. So in here, I'm tapping four. When I click on the Q prompt, it's going to give me four different mages and then i'm going to pick one from it of course you can do more if you want to okay so once completed you can go here and click on this q icon you will see all the generated images so let's take a look this is the first one this is the second one third and fourth now from this you can pick anyone i think i'm going to go with this one since this character is actually facing forward so right click on the image and then select open image in new tab. This will open it in a new tab. Now you can close out this Q panel. By the way, the shortcut is Q. If you click on the blank space here and then you press Q, it will open and close that uh, panel there. Now next we'll need to load the LTX image to video workflow. So again, I will go to workflow at the top, click on browse template, and this time click on video here. Next. 
click on this one here that says LTX image to video, and this will load the workflow. If you get this notification that says missing models, then you can click on the download button here to download the relevant models. For me, I've slightly renamed mine, which is why it cannot detect it. So I'm going to click on the close button. Now, just middle click on your mouse and this will allow you to pan around. Otherwise, you can go here and uh, it will tell you that there is a mode here. If you change it to hand, then you'll get a hand and you can click and drag to navigate the canvas. You can use these buttons here to zoom in, zoom out of the canvas, or you can use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out. So just navigate until you find this load clip and select the T5 XXL, depending on the version that you've downloaded. Next, find the load checkpoint and then select the LTX video to be 0.9.5.save tenses. Now I explained how to download this in my previous video, so make sure to check that video out. Otherwise, the default one will give you the version 0.9.0. That is an older model. Now next, find this green node here, and we'll need to go back to our Flux workflow. Find the green node, click on it, press Ctrl A to select everything, Ctrl C to copy, Go back to the LTX workflow and then delete everything from here and then paste the prompt that you've used to generate the image. Now, next we'll find this node here, the load image node and take the image. So it should be in a new tab. Click on it, drag into this load image node, release, and it's going to load the image here. Now, if you have any difficulty dragging and loading the image here, you can go into your image, right click, click on save image as, save the image and then go here where it says choose file to upload and then click on it look for the image and then load it here now next we'll need to downscale the image since we are working with a video generator here so click on the node drag to the left make some space take the image this dot here that you see from here click on it and drag out release and then click on the search option from here Type in upscale, and then select the first one. It should be from the comfy core. Click on it and you will get a new node. We'll keep the width and height as 512 by 512. Change the crop to center and you may want to change the upscale method. Now, since I'm downscaling, I'm going to keep it as nearest exact. But if you find that your input image is becoming pixelated, then you can change it to the, any of the other upscale method. Next, we'll need to pass this image output to the LTX image to video as an image input. So take the image out and then just drag it to this node here. So basically we are connecting these two here. Now let's go into the positive prop and just find where your character has any kind of expression that you may have described. Even if you did not describe any expression, you can go and add some expression here. So I'm going to say that I have a woman smiling to the viewer. And I'm going to say in a confident manner. Now, next, make sure that this control before generation is at random because you will need to do multiple generation in order to get a good result. Now, since this input image is 1024 by 1024, which is a square image, I'm going to change the aspect ratio of the video to 512 by 512. You can also try 768 by 768 if you have enough system resources. Next, in order to get more frame, I'm going to change this length from 97 to 105. This means that the LTX video will generate 105 frames and I will be able to use those frames to make my different expressions. Now we'll need to make one last change and we don't really need an animation node here. So you can disable this or you can delete it. I'm going to delete it and then take out the image output, drag out and then select save image or preview image. I'm going to go with save image. All right, so once you have everything set up correctly, you can click on the Q prompt. Make sure that your batch count is at one since this can take a minute or two depending on your hardware. 
All right, so I finally got something that we can work with. By the way, if on your first try you don't get good result, then you can click on the Q prompt. This will change the seed, this noise seed here, and you might get a good result. For me, it did not work. As you can see from my Q panel here, I've done, this is the first one, it did not work. Second, third, fourth, fifth. So I've done five tries, and it's only on the fifth try that I got something to work. So I'm going to show you how I did it and what other things I've changed. Now, I'm not editing the failures from the video because I don't want to give you that impression, that false impression that it's a one-click solution. You will need to give it multiple tries in order to get something good. After all, this is free. Now, what I've done mainly is change the prompt. So my prompt was not working. What I done is I went to ChatGPT, I gave it the previous prompt and I asked it to just generate it for a video shot. So it gave me this and this prompt actually worked. The next thing I did was add this here, the LTX pre-process and I have the image compression at 40. So this is from the latest LTX video 0.9.5. Again, I made that video yesterday. So I've just added this after my upscale image and um, I'm not sure if this one did the trick or if it was just the prompt that did the trick but either way I got something that I'm able to work with so the first image will be this image here and then you can use your arrow keys to go through the different image and at the bottom here you will see that we have a number right now I'm on frame 20 and I have 105 different images to work with so right now we have something that the eyes are closing and we start to get that smile. So I asked for a smile in my prompt. And as you can see, now we have a smile. We also have like a head movement that so that could be a different image that you can use. Now, let's say I want to keep this frame here and I want to work with this frame. So you can look at the number. It's 43. Comfy UI saves all the images inside an output folder. So in your Explorer, you can go to where you have Comfy UI. Now go inside the Comfy UI folder. There will be an output folder and in there, you will see all the generated images. So you can go and find that specific image there. Now, if you want to work with this inside of Comfy UI, so before you do anything, change this control before generate to fix. And this way, when I click on the Q prompt, it doesn't do anything. It basically reuse what was generated before so we don't lose this generation next we'll take this image drag out go into search and look for image from batch so once you've selected it again we have this batch index and we know from selecting the images here that let's say i want this one so frame 45 this is the index so we'll go to 45 the length is one so we just want one image from this entire batch you can drag out to a preview or a save node and there you go you have that individual frame so from here you can continue working on it and you can also go back here and uh, this one i've said she is smiling but i can have a different prop where she's angry not a lot of movement it's only at the end that she starts to get angry but we don't have enough frame to complete this this uh, sequence so around here so in this case i'm going to show you what you can do when you get in this situation so i know i have 96 here this is a good frame that i want to use i'll go back to this image from batch 96 and i should get that image here this one okay accidentally i had my control before generate at randomize so it generated a new one and in this new one we actually have different expressions that we can use so this one maybe we can use this one for a different expression but let's go back to that previous scenario where the model was starting to generate something but not enough frames to complete that generation so get that uh, image and load the image into the load image node and now we're basically starting from here and telling the model to continue the generation so if you know the seed you can have the seed fixed because i accidentally click on the q prompt while this was randomized i lost that seed so i'm just going to go with a new seed okay so 
Now you will see that it's going to start from this frame and then it will try to continue that video shot. So we can see now we are starting to get a little bit more expression here. So this is the method that you will use. You will go back here, change the prompt to a different expression and just continue on like this. Now, if you find that you need a higher quality, so I'm just going to simulate that. Let's just fix the seed first. Okay, I'm going to choose this image as my image for this demonstration. And uh, after this image from batch, I can pass this to an upscaler. So I can take the image, drag out, Click on the search and go with upscale. Now, there are different methods to upscale images inside of Comfy UI. Most common one would be upscale image using a model. We'll need to select a model. And if your image is anime, you can use something like anime. You, you can use the general one that's for uh, real ESO again. I'm going to choose the 2x one. Click on QProp and you will see now we have we go from 512 by 512 to 1024 by 1024. Now some of these model will change the image slightly. So right now we don't have a lot of changes. This one is already blurry, but uh, it tried to get it uh, sharper here. But depending on the model that you're using, you may see that it changes your image. Another option in order to upscale your image would be to use the normal scaler. So upscale image by, and we can double the resolution. Let's do this method and let's do a preview. Now, again, we have, we go from 512 to 1024, but if you want more detail on this image now, we can take this image and send it to a BAE encode. And we now use a flux image to image workflow. So the VA is going to come from the flux checkpoint. Now we'll need a positive, so that's going to be from the clip. We'll also need a negative prompt, even though the flux model doesn't require a negative prompt. So let's delete this one. What we can do is we can take this conditioning, drag out and search for a conditioning zero out. This will zero out the positive prompt. This way we don't get a negative prompt. So this here will be the positive this will be the negative and we'll need a k sampler so the model here is going to be the flux model positive is here negative is here the latent is this image now so we'll take it here now to control how much you want to change this image you will change this value here the denoising factor it goes from zero to one zero means no change one means change everything i'm going to go with 0.5 as a test now the flux requires a flux guidance so we'll add this node here and this is going to be the positive so we'll take the positive in here and this output will go into positive like this now cfg should be one and number of steps you can do 10 20 25 it depends on you and then we'll need a va decode again grab the va from the model and let's do a preview Click on the Q prompt and check the result. And now you have a little bit more detail. It's the same image. So again, it's a 1024 by 1024. As you can see here, this, this is the uh, normal one that we upscale with uh, a simple upscaler. Now you can see from the mouth here, we have the teeth. This one, it's not in focus at all. But this method, by doing an image to image using the flux model, we are able to add more detail to this image. So you can keep on going, adding detail to your individual images. So using this method, you will be able to get as many expressions as you want. You might not be able to get uh, things like tears falling from the eyes. I'm not sure if this model can do it, but most of the expression, angry, happy, smiling, you should be able to do it with it and you're not restricted to default expressions that you would get if you were to buy a pack this one you can let your imagination go and as long as you're able to prompt for it you should be able to get good results now it will take some time yes after all this is free method if you want to save on time then of course get different packs if you have time and you would like to experiment this is the method to go and you will be able to generate as many expressions as you want. All right, so hopefully this video was helpful in getting you to generate different expressions based on different characters. By the way, you don't need to have just um, an illustration or a game character in here. You can have a realistic person here 
as well. This LTX model can do realistic images too. All right, thank you for watching until the very end. Have a nice day. Take care. I will see you next time.